The things I teach men are stoicism, discipline, self-respect, hard work, obeying authority, listening to your fight coach, working hard in school, making as much money as possible in your job. If you actually watch the things I say, if you actually watch my comments about women, I've done long podcasts for hours long about females, talking about protecting for them, providing for them, how I believe women should be treated in a relationship. I've done all of this, but you don't watch any of it, and then you come here and ask me to answer questions I've answered at length thousands of times. Since you came out of custody, there seems to have been a lot about your charity work. Correct. On your social media. Always, I've always done the charity work, but now I'm promoting it. There seems to be a real shift. Yeah. I wonder what's behind that. Well, I've always done the charity work. I've been doing the charity work for years. I believe that it's my legacy to leave a positive influence on the world, and I've been doing charity work for over five years. Post my unfair, unjust incarceration. Post that, I've made it more clear the charity work I'm doing. But this is, again, once again, very interesting. I spend $25 million a year feeding children. Men, male children, and female children. In, in Turkey, in Syria, in Iran, in Iraq, I literally spend $25 million a year feeding children, and I'm still the worst man in the world because, because four years ago I made a sarcastic comment. Because some people would look at that and say, okay, so before you got money from attracting people to your website by making controversial comments, but that might have got you into trouble. And so now you're looking for a new market. You're looking for a new market of followers who are attracted by a different sort of persona. I've always done the charity work, so that is obviously incorrect. And I have proof that I've always done the charity work, so you're wrong, firstly. I believe that if you have a lot of wealth, you should help people, and I'm helping people. I also think it's very, very interesting that you could not find another celebrity in the UK or anywhere else who's spending 25 million pounds a year feeding children in war-torn countries. I'm doing that, and I've been doing that for a long time without even mentioning it. I never even said it. And now that I've said it, people are going to attack me for it and say that it's disingenuous. Just the, the person in Sudan who's eating the meal, do you think they believe it's disingenuous? No, I think they, I think they feel pretty good that Andrew Tate fed them. And to sit here and say that I'm a bad person now because I'm manipulating charity, because I'm using charity, I'm just trying to do good in the world. That's all I've ever been trying to do. Just to put on the record then, you've said that you've invited us into your house. Correct. We're here because you're under house arrest. Correct. If you were free to leave, we would have negotiated a more neutral setting. Don't you yeah. think, as the BBC, it would be very interesting to come here and discuss the fact that I was put in a dungeon for 92 days and then locked in house arrest without charge? Don't you think that's a far more interesting conversation than old YouTube snippets? Don't you think that would be interesting? You're here under house arrest because there's an ongoing investigation into rape and human trafficking allegations against Correct. you. Correct. I've been incarcerated without charge. And don't you think... It, don't, the rape allegation has been dropped. Correct. So I am I'm a, I'm incarcerated without charge, and I think that'd be a far more interesting conversation than I guess Julian Assange is incarcerated without charge, and nobody's interested in that either. So if you actually want to do some genuine journalism and investigation, we could talk about the fact that an innocent man who has yet to be charged with a crime has had his liberty deprived of him. And I think that would be a far more interesting angle than talking about me being the most dangerous man in the world because I own the car. And this question about schools being very worried about your influence. Yes. Boys in primary school or, you know, boys as young as 11 are quoting you at school, yeah. attacking girls, refusing to respect female teachers. Yeah. Would you like to say anything? I'd like to say a lot. First things first, as I've repeatedly said, and, I, and the only reason I keep repeating is to ensure this interview will be edited. I am a positive force for the world, and I teach children discipline. I teach the world discipline, male or female, of any age. And a lot of women listen to me as well. 40% of the people who listen to me are actually female. Secondly, I do understand with my massive influence, and I am now the one of the most influential people on the planet, that I do have to be slightly more careful with things I say. I'm not going to disagree with that. The idea that I said something five years ago on a video that got 300 views... So what do you mean, being slightly more careful? I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. Some of the jokes I made four or five years ago on a YouTube channel that got 300 views, I would no longer make it. Like I, what? Like the OnlyFans joke, the one you mentioned, repeatedly. When she said, my man's car is my car, and then she said she did OnlyFans, and I said, what do you saw on OnlyFans? She said, my tits. And I said, well, those are your man's tits. As a joke, ha ha ha, everybody laughed. The fact that I could do that on a podcast five years ago and only got 300 views, now I understand I'm the most influential man on the face of the planet. I would be more careful with certain things I say. That doesn't mean the things I originally said were genuinely out to harm people. Do you really believe you're the most influential man on the face of the planet? I'm the most Googled person on the planet. Do you believe you're the most influential man on the face of the planet? I'm the most Googled man on the planet. I think we're done. Yep. Thanks, Lucy. It was enjoyable. Nice to meet you. <laughs> no, it was fun. It was good. I enjoyed it. De-mic me. I don't want to damage anything. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Goodbye. The very white staff.
Which is what we do with them.